I need a doctor in NYC who is experienced in dissolving lingering restylin. Any suggestions? How can I find a doctor in NYC who is very experienced in dissolving lingering restylin in nasolabial and marionette line area using hyaluronidase, vitrace, hyalinex, or other means? I've had three rounds so far, fairly conservative, with some improvement, but I think I need a more aggressive treatment using hyaluronidase or other means to treat possible encapsulation, allergy, or other issues. Thank you for your question. You submitted your question without a photo. You state in your question that you, uh, you feel like you need more hyaluronidase treatment in order to address lingering filler um, in your nasal label fold marionette lines and that you've undergone already a few sessions that were conservative and you're looking for someone to do this uh, additional treatment to address possible encapsulation or allergy. Well, I can certainly share with you a little bit about m my experience using hyaluronidase uh, in situations that are probably comparable to what you're dealing with now. A little bit of background, I'm a board-certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship-trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years using the injectable fillers in the hyaluronic acid family, whether it's in the Restylin family or the Juvederm family, is something I do a lot of in my practice. And I have also had the opportunity to help people who come from many places who have issues with the placement of filler that may result in swelling, uh, in, in possible inflammation, as well as other issues that have to do with the irregularities and the application of hyaluronidase. I think that um, when you think about this, this, the challenges of using uh, fillers, we are, always have to be mindful of the reality that fillers are a foreign body and that the body does treat a foreign body in times with something called encapsulation. And so that encapsulation can make it sometimes challenging for the, the, the hyaluronic, hyaluronidase solution to get to where it needs to go. So it means that, um, that it is not unusual to need multiple treatments. Uh, we've routinely treated patients who have come to us with, uh, with under eye filler that resulted in the formation of excessive puffiness which uh, required several sessions in order to achieve the uh, complete dissolution uh, of the hyaluronic acid. I think that at times when people have hyaluronic acid in deeper tissue for extended periods of time, that it is a challenge to get all of it. And we've had patients, uh, one particular comes to mind, where she was very much aware of the swelling of her cheek area um, and she had me injecting her um, frequently uh, to the point where uh, I, I, would off, I would wonder whether or not she was overreading this. This is another health professional so I gave her some of the benefit of the doubt and, um, and she felt that, that it was working with each subsequent treatment and I got to see that evolution. Um, in addition, we've had patients who've also had issues with biofilm, and biofilm is basically the formation of uh, a, a response to bacteria that is uh, living on top of the injectable filler, the way uh, the bacteria can live on top of, a, of an implant. And so um, biofilm is often um, a, a challenging diagnosis and people may see it as uh, either an, inf a, a, an allergic response or um, some kind of inflammation that is a response to the foreign body effect of the material. Um, I think that hyaluronic acid generally is very well tolerated and it's been around as long as it's a appropriately uh, sourced hyaluronic acid like coming from the major companies that m provide these uh, these fillers, whether it's Galderma or Allergan, 
Um, I think that allergies to this material is fairly rare. Um, that being said, of course, hyaluronidase, whether it's, whether it's for irregularities, whether it is for um, swelling, or if, whether it's even for biofilm, I have found that hyaluronidase to be a very useful tool. But that does require uh, multiple injections as well as going to the different levels. And so we've had patients who have got, traveled all over the world and um, were treated in different ways with antibiotics, steroids, and, and biofilm in particular is very, very challenging. But I, I think that we, that we were able to make, a, make an impact with the use of uh, hyaluronidase. So I think that uh, certainly you're on the right track. I would suspect that the amount of filler that was previously placed would be relatively modest in, in those particular areas. So I would be surprised if there hasn't been any um, benefit or response to the treatment. But I think that having more hyaluronidase injections done in short intervals I think will probably make the most sense to be able to ensure that if there is any issue with biofilm, that that would be addressed before there is a, there is a further growth of the bacteria. So that, I think, will be, does make sense um, and just has to be, uh, require multiple treatments when you think about something that may be, as you wrote, an allergy. If it's just encapsulation and if it's just a space occupying issue, well then usually one or two injections um, can make a, a, a significant difference and the anatomy can come closer to the, its normal baseline. So I think meet with the doctor and uh, with experience with the use of hyaluronidase and, and take it, for, take it um, from that point forward. And if it's possible for you to get any photos of yourself pre-treatment, um, and the, of course knowing the time frame before, uh, since the treatment, that's always also helpful. But generally speaking, I think physical exam pretty much determines um, what level of baseline can be achieved and the stability of that appearance. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your question.